Hey, church family. It's, uh, it's awesome to be able to have the privilege to speak to you today. I hope that you are having a good day today. I hope that um, things in your life are going well. I hope that you are blessed, and I pray for you often. Uh, I want you to know before I get into my lesson, uh, I'm thankful for the opportunity that you guys have made available to my family and I um, by being able to serve God through uh, aiding him in the gospel. I'm so thankful, so thankful to be able to work in God's vineyard. But I was asked today to share with you guys a message. Um, Rick come to me earlier this week and he asked me, he said, hey, uh, if you don't mind, I'd like for you to uh, come up with something and uh, put it together, put it on a video so that I can share it with the congregation. And I thought, what a great opportunity for me to um, be able to speak to you guys. Uh, you know, I know a few times, I, I think one time when I was in Memphis, I was able to preach for you. I don't know that I remember another time when I was able to do that. So today I hope that by being able to share God's word with you, this will be an encouragement to you to show you that um, God, uh, your prayers are being answered and your support is definitely, definitely uh appreciated. I'm going to come to you today from Psalm 24. Uh, so if you will, if you want to, you can look at uh, the scripture with me. I have uh, a, a sort of a few notes. If you see me looking over here, that's what I'm doing. I'm just checking my notes uh, as we go along. But Psalm 24 verses 1 through 6. We're going to just go ahead and read down through verse 6. And then uh, we will go back through it uh, with just a, an examination of the text. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the uh, floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul into vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessings from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Selah. Now as we read this little section of uh, Psalm 24, uh, this is the the, the words there that kind of follow Psalm 23, uh, you know, the Psalms were written at different times, so this may have been a collaboration separate, completely separate. Matter of fact, I believe wholeheartedly that it was completely separate from the, the 23rd Psalm that we know as the Lord, um, the Lord is my shepherd. But um, this one here, specifically speaking, I, I just love the way it talks. It says the, the earth is the Lord's. Well, we know that uh, just by looking at Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Uh, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and you know, God, darkness was upon the face of the waters, and the Spirit of God moved, uh, and 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 things began to happen. So we see in Genesis one how God brings everything into um, existence. He brought he he creates the world and everything therein, the inhabitants of that world says they that dwell therein as well. So we need to understand not only did he create the world, but he created us too. Everything that's in that world he created. It says, for he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the fields. We need to understand that, um, that our God is so good and so great that he set everything into place the way that it was and the way that it is now to this day. And uh, none of uh, anything that he has set into place is going to be moved until he decides to move it. Uh, that is the God that you and I serve. Verse 3 says, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place? Now, we talk about ascending into the hill of the Lord, this holy place. Who's going to stand in the holy place? Um, this is this would be something of uh, someone who would have to be upright, someone who would have to be correct. And if you look at verse 4, that goes and tells us exactly who it will be that stands in the place of the Lord, in this holy place on the hill of the Lord. It says, He that has clean hands and a pure heart, 
who hath not lifted up his soul into vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. It's he that shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from God, from the God of his salvation. The one who does right. Look at the, that first part of verse 4. It says, clean hands. Now, what would be the significance of clean hands? Well, I I believe wholeheartedly, you know, hands are what we, they're the instruments by which we do things with. Matter of fact, Waycaster says this, he denotes here, hands are the instruments by which we do things right, and to have clean hands is the equivalent of being upright in the eyes of God. Pilate, if you remember Pilate, he washed his hands in a symbolic gesture that he thought would clear him of all guilt from the crucifixion of our Lord. clean hands. They're necessary and ultimately the one who has these clean hands, who stays away from filth and from doing things that are wicked or unrighteous. And it says, he who has a pure heart. Well, we note and, and, and denote that the heart is equivalent to the spiritual mind, heart and mind. So uh, not necessarily the pure and, and clean, good organ that we have. And it's, yes, of course, important for us to be healthy, but having a pure heart goes a little further into saying that we have a clean mindset, um, that we have the one who has a pure heart. Think about uh, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 8. It says, he who is pure in heart shall see God. It's the pure in heart that are going to see him. Uh, that is the one who's going to be able to go into the mountain or the hill of the Lord, the one who's going to be able to stand in that holy place. He has clean hands. He has a pure heart. It says also, who uh, hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity. And when you look at that word vanity, um, it means emptiness. And when uh, the wording there, it says lifts up his soul. So the one who exalts emptiness, um, what would be emptiness, though, in this world that anything that does not uh, glorify the Lord would be considered emptiness? Things that will not pertain, uh, that will not give you that very gift of salvation that we need to be able to make it, that will not give you peace and joy and love, and those things are empty. Um, and the one who exalts his soul in emptiness will not be able to see the hill of the Lord will not be able to stand in the holy place. Um, it says, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord. He shall receive the blessing of the Lord, the one who has clean hands, a pure heart, who's not lifted up his soul in vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive a blessing. You know, it's, uh, we... And only those of us who are righteous are the ones who are blessed. So are you blessed today? Um, are you able to call yourself blessed? It says in righteousness from God, from the God of his salvation. Um, the one who's able to go into the presence of God, that holy place, into the hill of the Lord is the one who's righteous. The blessed one. Um, the one who has done God's will and kept himself from filth and kept himself in a clean mindset and done that very thing that God expects of him. If you love me, keep my commandments, John chapter 14 and verse 15. God wants for us to, um, he wants for us to exalt him and not for us to glorify ourselves or our lives in the things of this world. You see, we get lost and, and sometimes um, even become, entangled with things uh, that amount to nothing, that pertain to absolutely nothing. Eternity is at hand, and we should make sure that we are always doing our best to keep ourselves pure, keep ourselves clean, uh, so that we can be with the Lord. Um, I, my prayer constantly is uh, that I will always be someone who represents the Lord, uh, that I will always do that which is right. And um, I pray each night when I pray with the boys at the end of the night, we always pray, God, we thank you so much, Lord, for this day. We pray that, Father, you give us another day. And if it be your will, Lord, help us to be better than we were today. Uh, our goal as Christians should always be to strive to be better than we were the day before. 
we are all going to have faults and we're all going to have things that we struggle with. But every day, if we are striving as God has told us to strive and doing that which God wants us to do, I believe that he will bless us. And it says here that the one who refrains from those things of filth and those that mindset um, that exalts emptiness, he is the one who will be blessed. He, was, he is the one that will be welcomed into that holy place, into that hill of the Lord. Um, are you welcomed in today? Are you able to say that your life is where it needs to be? I pray that it is, and I pray that this is an encouragement to you. But if it, if you're listening today and then there's something in your life that needs to change, you have the ability, because of God giving us his son and the sacrifice that he gave on Calvary, now we have this avenue that we can go to God in prayer. We can um, ask the Lord to forgive us. We can make a decision to repent you know, to, to not do that that we have done before and to be different and, um, and, and, and completely walk away from this video that you're watching right now as a changed person. See, God is powerful and he has that ability to do that. He can show you his power through um, our willingness to change and be transformed by his word. I pray that this has been an uh, uplifting or encouraging message for you today. If you need uh, prayer, or if there's something you're struggling with and you'd like to uh, just ask, you know, if, if you need to ask anybody for prayer, please feel free to contact me, uh, my message on, on, on my messenger on Facebook. Sometimes it's easier to talk to somebody on the outside. So if you need a listening ear, I'll be glad to listen. I'll be glad to help you through uh, life's troubles. So keep a clean heart. Keep yourself um, a, a, a clean hands, a clean heart, and uh, do not lift up your soul to vanity. Thank you guys so much. And uh, Lord willing, I'll see you on the hill of the Lord in that holy place.